I'd next like to move on to the theme of this year's conference, GIS Creating a Sustainable Future. This is a strong vision, and part of the vision was inspired by a recent book that I read by Mario Palma, who was one of the founders of ANEHI, which is the large statistical and science and mapping organizations in Mexico. He said the following in his book, lack of understanding of our reality is one of the greatest risks our society is facing. And I think all of us in the GIS community, all of us in the, in the world community can understand this. He also later said in his book, our future depends upon creating and applying that understanding. And these were the beacons that started Anehi, but they're also for me, they speak to me, these words speak to me because they really are a purposeful way of describing our work. Creating and applying understanding. Our world is a complex and highly interdependent ecosystem that's rapidly changing and evolving. The world we live in is actually not well known. It's fragile. It's rich in biodiversity, which is disappearing at an alarming rate. It's also increasingly dominated by human activities. Geologists are beginning to call this the Anthropocene epoch, that epoch where humans absolutely dominate the life and uh, his, uh, the history, the life, the, the future of our world. Today, our world is being challenged because us as humans are living recklessly and unsustainably. And this is threatening our future. Human-induced climate changes and overpopulation are resulting in interconnected patterns of change, steep declines in biodiversity, and many other factors. We read about them, scientists tell us about them almost every day. Clearly for me, personally for me, it speaks that we collectively, we as a general human population, but also we as GIS users, are collectively responsible for its future. And it could go many ways. Creating a sustainable future, which I believe is possible, will require that we dramatically change our priorities. I believe in this strongly, about making a major commitment to life and our future. And we must act now in order to achieve this. There are many things to do, like restoring nature, improving business efficiencies, reducing pollution, consuming less, implementing sustainable land use patterns, and many, many more. Applying our best science and our best technology and our best creative thinking will clearly be necessary. And I can't help but think and know that geographic thinking is gonna be essential in this. Sustainability requires that we see the world as one single ecosystem. Geography, the science of our world, provides the science and the language to be able to do this. It helps us organize and integrate all the factors, environmental factors like biodiversity and ecosystem services, and integrate them with economic systems, spatially, seeing their connections. It allows us to integrate them with social factors, and the maps that you shared, that I shared about your work a few minutes ago, are the evidence of this. It not only organizes and integrates all the factors, it also illuminates patterns and relationships and helps us discover things. It provides us a framework for understanding and applying our knowledge. I like to call this the geographic approach. The geographic approach is a way of thinking and problem solving that integrates geographic science and information into how we understand and manage our planet. And Mario Palma would clearly understand that. It's a holistic approach. It brings sciences together. It's integrated. It supports and is enriched by spatial understanding. And it is also collaborative. The idea is supporting multiple objective solution creating. Inclusive and multidisciplinary in its nature. And the great hope, the great vision, is that this will impact virtually every sector of our society going forward. 
This approach integrates and supports powerful methodologies familiar to many of you here in the audience. Geoanalytics, creating insights and understanding. Geovisualization, a language like through maps and visualization for communicating the content of our world and the context of our world. Geodesign, designing sustainable and inclusive futures. Geocollaboration, engaging all the stakeholders and geoaccounting, being able to account for all the factors, setting up measures that are not just economic driven, but are driven in a mixed way, balanced way. And this geoscience and understanding can support our future. It can support our planning, our decision-making, our engineering, our operations, how we manage our individual organizations and how we manage the world. These are all critical. And I appreciate the good work that you are already doing. Clearly GIS enables the geographic approach, the very tools that you use for measuring and, and visualizing and analyzing and making predictions, doing planning, making decision makings. All that work that you do is a kind of framework and a process for applying geographic knowledge, this integrative knowledge widely. And as I already said, you're already doing this. You are applying the geographic approach and creating so many solutions for a sustainable future. You are protecting biodiversity. You are reducing the use of precious resources. You're optimizing logistics. You are managing sustainable agriculture and forests. The examples from, for example, the great coffee growers are proof of this. However, Clearly, we need to scale up our collective efforts exponentially. Just technology can help us. It's not the only thing, but it can help us. And it is advancing rapidly. It's integrating many new innovations, helping us reach this kind of scale. This will be essential. Things like cloud computing, advanced analytics, the integration of imagery and remote sensing, interactive mapping, 3D visualization. Remote sensing is just a piece of it, but it's a major and significant part. Opening up access to this through the multitude of apps. All of this will help us scale up our collective efforts. GIS is also increasingly becoming interconnected, creating what I like to refer to as geospatial infrastructure. We're connecting our systems. And this in turn is helping us collaborate. It's helping us share. It's transforming workflows and decision-making at many scales. Geospatial infrastructure actually is, and I'm seeing this alive in different organizations like Louisville, uh, for example, uh, it's actually transforming organizations. It's creating a whole new kind of intelligent infrastructure, not just digital infrastructure, not just water infrastructure, sewer infrastructure, or road infrastructure. It's creating a new, a new kind of infrastructure for organizing and making distributed data that we collect available. As a basis for this, it's shared geospatial services organized through portals for discovery and access by apps, apps that now support all types of users. This is an exciting time because this infrastructure, and I'm watching it closely and so are you, uh, is expanding really quickly. It's supporting not only local applications, shared information and so on, but also global applications with millions of users and ten, tens of millions of shared data sets and services that are being made available in this way. It's making billions of maps every day. And these billions of maps are reaching billions of people they're changing how they think. It's creating a whole new kind of global information system. You've heard me before talk about a nervous system for our planet. My sense is this infrastructure is creating a nervous system for sustainability. I'd like to talk about some of the details of this nervous system. First, geospatial infrastructure is integrating all kinds of data. It can now integrate all types of of tabular data and map data and imagery data. It can integrate real-time data and abstract them into these web maps and layers and scenes that we're finding so dramatically useful. 
so that apps of many types can use them. Geospatial infrastructure delivers powerful apps, not just for GIS users in desktops and so on, but these apps are going to scale with massive mobile deployments for collecting data and also disseminating data. And also the pervasiveness of web apps is just um, unbelievable. Literally trillions of maps being looked at around the world. And my big hope is that this will continue to expand as it has in the last couple of years, enveloping and bringing us together as a society. Some more details. This geospatial environment, these geospatial capabilities are becoming embedded in other large IT enterprise systems. Our colleagues in other companies like Microsoft and IBM and Salesforce and Amazon and, and on and on, Autodesk, are putting maps and geospatial information into their apps. And that is in turn changing how they do engineering and CRM and, yeah, well, you can just look at it. It's, it's really integrating geospatial thinking and geographic thinking into the apps that non-GIS professionals use across the organizations. And complementing this is the enrichment that's happening as a result of advanced GIS analytics. This is allowing us to see new things, create new insights with predictive modeling or the ability to analyze spatial temporal information together. The ingestion of real-time information and the simple tools to be able to interactively do visual spatial analytics. These are powerful. And then enriching it further is GeoAI, machine learning and so on. And the ability now to store imagery in the cloud and perform advanced raster analytics. And finally, big data, the ability to integrate and pull on and create understanding from these massive data sets. I wanna talk about a couple of these. Big data integration is gonna open our eyes. <laughs> it's gonna let us see new things, relationships we never understood before. The ability to access these massive data collections from transactional systems and imagery and link them to the very same tools that you are using will create new forms of understanding. Imagery and remote sensing is one category of that big data, and it is enriching GIS, as we already saw in the examples that you shared, all the way from simple image base maps for thematic underlays uh, to oriented imagery, integration of motion imagery, dynamic image processing, point cloud visualization, and as I mentioned before, GeoAI and machine learning, which is allowing us to pull off the image feature information that enriches our GIS. All of this imagery data is increasingly being used in raster analytics and modeling, and increasingly that's being put into the cloud. We'll talk more about that together. Bringing all of these sources of data together and being able to integrate into your work these timely information sets. Many of you are implementing this concept of geospatial hubs and engaging with other communities. This trend and the technology associated with it first started with engaging citizens and cities. It's all about organizing initiatives and then organizing the teams and organizing their activities. But this is now, especially in the last year, expanded to organizing professional relationships between users of different types. This, is, this technology and the organizational strength of the people behind it is fostering many two new types of geo-collaboration. And I love that concept because it's essential to make the concepts of geospatial infrastructure work. I'll summarize what I've been talking about. Our world is being challenged on many fronts and we will increasingly need to be responsible for its future. Part of this presentation is about getting us even conscious about it among ourselves. The geographic approach and geospatial infrastructure, this rapidly expanding new pattern, is gonna provide us with the science and also the practical means, the essential means to be able to make this uh, work. But they're not gonna be enough. You, you and your work are going to be essential, providing leadership in your own organization, carrying out problem solving, the kind of things you already do, but thinking larger, 
thinking holistically. My place in my organization, my organization's place in the world. Promoting our best tools and methods and thinking, being able to communicate clearly and effectively, and most of all, collaborating with other kinds of organizations, exchanging ideas, which I really wish we could be doing here together physically. This, is, this informal communication is so very important. Also, for me personally, I feel like I'm all in. I'm going all in. And I really want to encourage you to go all in. Act with urgency. These are the times where we really have to get it together and move at many different scales.